Hi guys, welcome to The Drop. My name is Hassan, with me today is Samir, and we're going to be talking about why diversity in media representation matters. Samir, for you, why is it important that in this day and age, there needs to be more diversity in the way, uh, in, in the media as we see it? Thank you, Hassan. Uh, diversity matters because diverse teams tend to produce better content, it's more productive, and makes a lot of business sense, frankly. So there's empirical evidence that over the last 20 years, all the content that has been produced, which has been more diverse, has tended to fare better and has been more profitable. But apart from the business argument, there's a very strong ethical argument to be made over here as well. We're living in a world which is increasingly multicultural, pluralistic, and the question that we want to ask is, is our media representing the world that we live in? And can everybody, all the minorities within those communities, also see themselves on screen? And uh, which is oftentimes not the case. And so I think diversity really matters for that representation. And diversity also matters to show our societies as they are. So do you think enough of an effort has been made in recent times? I know uh, people had uh, the hashtag with the Oscars being so white, with so many films having white protagonists talking about all of that. Do you think that a genuine effort has been made? Because people will look at you and say, there are now more superstars or famous people of uh, diverse origins than there ever have been in the past. So that's absolutely true. In the last 20 years, if you look at Hollywood, if you look at a lot of the TV series that are coming out, you see a lot more people of color, of different uh, minority backgrounds, more gender representation as well. But the question about you know, the Oscars being so white is who's writing your stories and who's getting the awards or who's being nominated? So is the question that over the last year there have just been no minority characters in TV, which is probably not true, or have they just not been good enough that they weren't, uh, they weren't nominated? And again, that raises a lot of questions, which is you know, what are you actually representing and what is it that you're awarding? In, in this regard also though, is it the fact that there are just more shows featuring non-diverse characters, that there are more, like you said, shows written for characters who tend to be of uh, what you may call the majority background, in this case uh, of a white, maybe Anglo-Saxon Christian background, is that the reason that there's just not enough uh, content for people to be nominated? I think that might be true and I think this is a very big problem of who's writing and who's telling your story. Uh, and who's representing your community. And what that leads to actually is sometimes misrepresentations, uh, as well as you know maybe treating characters and communities as very singular. So for example, I mean, if you look at the content, uh, again, if you broadly study the content, why is it that a lot of shows represent black characters as more likely to commit crime, or Latinos as more likely to be illegal immigrants, yeah. or Muslims as terrorists? And yeah. that is something that really calls into question that are you representing the entire community, or are you just reinforcing those singular characterization of communities and just reinforcing and building upon that fear and stereotype? That's true. So the, the other thing, uh, Samir, that I'd like to ask you with regard to this is, how do you think there can be a difference? You'll, you'll notice that one problem a lot of people have is they feel that uh, when the characters are given to those who may not necessarily be from those regions, so you'll have people who are non-Latino playing Latino, you'll have people who are non-Arab playing Arab, that's been a very big case because many Arab actors have actively refused to play the role of the token terrorist who only wants to shout Allahu Akbar and blow himself up. How are we going to go past those and bring in more positive characters? Is it just the writing or do production houses also need to take a different approach and maybe pick on stories which may not do well from a business point of view but will bring in more diversity? So I'd like to challenge that notion that they will not do well from a business point of view because actually when you do the research, study a community, develop content that you know the entire community relates to, you get a wider global audience. Yeah. So you know it actually will do better business. It's just really lazy research to not study a community and all the nuances and just try to represent the community with the existing stereotypes and maybe sometimes play out on fear and fear is what you know is uh, is used as a tactic to sell and I think I, it definitely can change if people spend more time studying and researching those communities and having people from those communities participate in the process. We've seen a lot of um, actors uh, stand up many of them also happen to be activists whether it's uh, 
you know, at the Screen Actors Guild Awards or other awards and speak about the importance of diversity, speak about, uh, especially in the US, embracing the fact that people come from different backgrounds, uh, have different faiths and things. Do you think that the issue now needs to take itself up with those who produce, write and make these shows as opposed to those who act in them who are clearly feeling that, that it is important to do that? Absolutely. And I think it's about who tells your story. So. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've heard of this show called The Little Mosque on the Prairie, which became a really famous Canadian production about a mosque in the north. But that show wasn't about that mosque or the religion of Islam itself. It was about all sorts of Muslims from all sorts of backgrounds, religious, non-religious, practicing, non-practicing. And what that portrays is a story told by you know Muslims as characterized as human. Yeah. So when you start seeing a community as human, as your neighbor, it actually helps break down those barriers. And I think, Hassan, like on a much larger scale, the reason why media representation is so important is because you know media influences people's thinking yes. and their unconscious bias. So when these people go out to become leaders in businesses, people writing policy for government, though that unconscious bias continues to play in the back of their minds. And so it's important to represent wholesome communities. It is. Uh, on a personal note, Samir, I'd like to talk about something uh, that's been bothering me for a very long time. I think when we look at the representation of Pakistanis and we look at the portrayal of Pakistanis, uh, especially when we look uh, in Bollywood, for example, considering that India and Pakistan are neighbors, uh, you would imagine that it's not that difficult to do a little bit of research, find a little bit out about Pakistanis. But we constantly see negative stereotypes of Pakistanis. Pakistanis will Firstly, the way that we'll be shown is being dressed up with, uh, as you can see, neither of us is wearing kajal in our eyes and we won't be wearing it after the show also, I promise you that. At least I won't, I can't speak on behalf of Samir. Uh, neither of us is wearing a, you know, a checkered scarf or walking around with a different kind of suit. Uh, it is surprising for people to realize that women in Pakistan not only work, but more often than not, they dress the way they want to. Uh, there is this representation of Pakistanis in Bollywood specifically as being backwards, as maybe not having as much education, uh, as you know, missing the, the moustache, having a slightly longer beard, kajal in the eyes. And then there is the other problem that there is, Pakistan is an ethnically diverse country. You know, there are people from many different backgrounds. We have many languages. Yet everybody in Pakistan in Bollywood movies sounds like they came here from Lucknow yesterday and have still not gotten over that. And Hassan, what worries me more about this particular instance is this is not lazy research which is driving it. This is actually the question of who is financing the content yeah. and what sort of content will be allowed to screen. So in recent years, you've seen the backlash of having Pakistani actors in movies yes. or Pakistani singers in movies. Yeah. And the only instances where Pakistan is allowed in Bollywood is when there is a negative portrayal and a very stereotypical portrayal. And unfortunately, Bollywood's audience is global. So this is not just impacting the views of Indians about Pakistan. This is impacting the stories being told about Pakistan all over the world because Pakistan doesn't have as much digital content no, globally no, that goes out. No. Also, and our movies tend not to focus. Uh, I may be wrong, but I can't imagine a recent Pakistani movie that has had as much of a focus on Indian characters or portraying them in any light, be it negative or positive. Whereas now we're seeing, even with you know, with with Netflix, for example, which is literally in every home. Uh, not just here, but also, like you mentioned, globally. Uh, and you're talking about shows like Sacred Games, the second season. You're talking about the new Shah Rukh Khan production, which tends to show um, Balochistan looking like Iraq with uh, a gentleman dressed up like uh, uh, a cheap version of Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, you know, standing around, uh, talking to everybody in Lucknowi Urdu. Surely, a billion, trillion dollar industry like Bollywood can write better roles, can research. Is it that they don't want to? Or is it that doing so and portraying Pakistan in any kind of positive light doesn't just fit in with the agenda they have at the moment? I think it just depends on who finances it and who allows what to be screened. And I would actually challenge Pakistan over here and say that we need to, uh, Pakistan needs to control its stories. Yeah. And so, for example, you see an instance of Zee Zindagi, a channel in India, which was regularly playing Pakistani TV shows, written, directed, produced, acted in by Pakistanis. And the response was overwhelmingly positive. So 
Indians started watching these shows and realizing that Pakistan is a beautiful country with beautiful people and uh, you know the kind of positive stereotypes that came out of it were all my Indian friends moms asking me whether it's true that all these Pakistanis spend all their evenings sitting in lawns sipping a cup of tea and they said we used to do this in Delhi but we've moved far from this and we miss that yeah. so there that creates a more human connection it's more about who tells the story and how does that content uh, get screened and where does it get screened. Thank you. That's all from us at The Drop, guys. Have a good one. We're really excited to share fantastic content with you on all the fun topics. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button below.